Greetings Haskellings. Today's retrospective is going to change something that bothered me a little bit at the time. And it's part two of yesterday's solution. And we really should have used LM here to check to see if Y minus X was a member of X's. One nice thing about doing that is we can actually replace the whole if then with an or. This hasn't affected the output. So on to day 10. And day 10 is all about joltage, electrical connections. We're going to start as usual by importing our advent of code module and using interact. Because we have a list of integers again, we use map read to read them all. We need to use every element of the list and find the next value and calculate the difference between those values, totaling up the differences of 1 and the differences of 3. The easiest way to do this is to sort the list and then find the difference between successive elements. Because we start from a joltage of 0, we need to add 0 to the start of the list, and we need to end up at the device rating which is 3 more than the highest number in the list. Adding 3 to maximum x's gives us that device rating. Next we're going to calculate the difference between successive elements, and we can use zip with here to do that. We use zip with and the subtract operation on the tail of x's and x's itself to calculate the diffs. Uh, actually, we're going to use this twice because we calculate first the one diffs, in which we count the number of ones in get diffs, and then we do the same for the threes. The puzzle then asks us to calculate the product of those two counts. We're getting the result zero, which is a little unexpected, and the problem is that instead of getting the diffs on x's, we should be getting the diffs on the sorted x's, which is called all. That looks better, so let's check that. And indeed, we have a gold star. The next part is a bit more challenging, but it somehow reminds me of the bags problem of day 7. So I'm going to try and actually use summarize to solve this one. We don't need the get diffs functions anymore, so let's remove those first. The reason I think we can use summarize here is because essentially we have ourselves another directed acyclic graph. The nodes of our graph are simply the elements of all. We can leave the implementation of get children for a second and consider the default value for a lone adapter. It should be one because there's only one arrangement of a single adapter. We're also going to need a calc function, and the starting node is going to be zero because we start with a zero joltage. Let's write the getChildren function, and it takes in a joltage and then returns us the list of adapters that will fit that joltage. We can use a list comprehension to achieve this. Each item in the list is the weight and then the next node. We don't actually need the weight, so let's just set that to one. The node is going to be selected from j plus 1 to j plus 3, but it has to be a member of our list. The calc function is going to take a list of the weights and the summaries of the children. We throw away the weights by mapping second over the list, and then we simply sum the list of summaries. Thanks to the magic of our summarize function, that actually should be it. So let's check that solution. And it looks good. It's interesting to note that our generalized version of the summarize function was able to solve quite different puzzles because they both boiled down to directed acyclic graphs that needed calculation from the bottom up. So my challenge for you today, dear Haskellings, is to try and find the directed acyclic graph in part two of day eight and use Summarize to solve it.